Well, hello there, humans, bees, earthlings, have you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome to the arena. These are two fantastic games from a couple of fantastic amigos. We have, on the one hand, Ah, Lorne's Daduck. I don't know how you pronounce that name, but it's a good name. And on the other, a longtime friend of the channel and fantastic tanking machine, Dark Magician Girl. Uh, these are two games that are absolutely sensational. One of them, uh, I'll put the link to DMG's YouTube channel in the description if I remember before I go on holidays. But if not, go and search up Dark Magician Girl on YouTube. Uh, a very, very good driver. Um, this is the Progetto. Now, the Progetto is a real enigma as a tank. It looks sensational. The, the legendary camo is pretty fantastic. But the enigma part of it is there are not a lot of tanks like it in Blitz. In fact, if you want to drive this kind of tank, you've got to drive the Pan-European line. And that is like an automatic auto loader. <laughs> like it's a drum loader. You basically, it will keep cycling through regardless. And that can leave for some incredibly cool late game heroics because the Progetto, it's very hard to gauge how many are left in the clip of the Progetto. Uh, it, it could have fired one. That could be its second shell. It could be its third shell because depending on which shell it is, the reload speed changes. So it is an enigma for the opposition. It's the kind of tank that you want to clear fairly early because it's not a fun tank to face late game. Uh, it can do both hit point trading and peek boom with equal aplomb. And it is, as I mentioned, unless you know when the first shell landed, it can be very, very difficult to work through. Now, the lawn, as we're just going to call him, has gone low. He's gone to the storied medium flank of Winter Malinovka. Oh, that was a very handy bounce, by the way. <laughs> Nothing like a, a damaged track from a 150 millimeter gun when you're running around in a tank that's got no armor. That is gorgeous. Oh, dearie me. The pattern is at sixes and sevens. Absolutely uh, baffled as to what he's doing. It looks like he's doing the twist. If I had to count, I'd say he's just doing the twist. Now, why is he waiting for his second shell to round? Because that means that he is going to be able to get that shell off a lot quicker. The reload time on a single shell, uh, the last shell, is longer indeed. I think the pattern just uh, was doing bad things. But while the pattern was there, he kept everyone stationary for the WZ-113, who was flying down from the top of the mountain to do a, uh, a bit of a number on the medium flank. Now, this is great. The perfect storm for the Progetto. The 113 is after him, but he's got a little bit of cover between him and the uh, 113, who has that enormous DPM. And the 113 does not have enormous traverse. As you can see here, the 113 is in a very sad place indeed. It's two on three. Easy, says the grill. Oh, don't you love a bloke or girl who says easy before a game is finished when it's three on two like what an absolute clown if i wasn't caring about the results of the game right now i would be putting my game face on and saying you know what i'm gonna do 120 percent uh bushka effort here rather than just go whatever man i don't care my team died blah blah blah, blah. easy easy my butt get ready for the love buddy uh the progetto is built for this gun depression uh drum reloader just mobility this is the exact situation where it just excels and it's in the kind of place now where it's got some hit points so it can actually maybe do a little bit of hit point trading if it can just find a target to trade with of course, there are two 150mm potential guns in the TDs, and there is an E100 with a 150mm gun. So if they can get a HE round in the Progetto, it's not going to be that much fun. Now, where the hell are they? Oh, hello. There's the E100. Now, that's a pretty traditional kind of look for an E100. Top of the map, he's gone the heavy route area, and he's holding the top, waiting for an opportunity to smash a medium. But that isn't really ideal in terms of where he is. Gets a very nice result, though. Only tracked instead of dacked, which is unfortunate for our amigo Arlorn in the Progetto. But 
it's given the Reds a clue as to where the mediums are and where they're coming from, where they're probably going to go to. Are they going to act on it or are they playing at the back? The camping grill, the camping waffle mix tractor. No, the grill who said easy is at the top of the map here. Oh, buddy. Oh. You had no hit points and there was three on two and you said easy. What were you thinking? That is like a crime against the gods. You have, you've literally dared RNGs Jesus to reach out and touch the other team with a golden staff of Kolobinovsky. Um, well, two-man Kolobinovsky anyway. The E100 starting to muscle around here and the Waffle Tractor and E100 are playing. Now, nice work. He went for an AP round and bounced Wow, that was a surprise. I really thought the E100 would have gone for a HE round there. It wouldn't have hurt. And instead, he has left the Waffle Mick tractor all. He's Waffle Mick Lonesome. And this is shaping into a very, very nice drive for the Progetto. He's letting the reload go. Now, this is why this tank is so dangerous. It's reloading even as we speak. One pussycat. Two pussycats. Three pussycats. That's right. Six kills, 7,000 damage. That was a great game. Good drive. Well done, Alornis Duduk. Alornis Duduk. I don't know how you pronounce that, dude, but well done. Uh, and we're going to have a look now at what I think is one of the best replays I've seen all month, and that's a game from Dark Magician Girl in the Leopard 1 on Z Canal. The grill did 4K. Not a bad run, Pekani, but, uh, yeah, the call of easy before the game was easy was not a good move. DMG going out on the medium flank here, which is pretty stock standard, but being very aggressive. This is biting off a lot of angle. There's only one medium on the red team, so I can see why he's doing that. And he immediately is rewarded by spotting the T30 and back. No, he's just checking to see if he's spotted, not spotted. Excellent. And that is an early scalp and a 600 damage into the game already with only 40 seconds gone. So it's a kill and 600D without the game being a minute old. What a great result. What an absolutely brilliant result. And a just reward for a very, very aggressive bit of gameplay. And you can see that there is a T62A loitering around down there somewhere. Is that a 62A? Uh, and that's given DMG the green light to get moving up into the red spawn. So a minute in, and we're now overlooking the red spawn do a pinch it in the corner. They're not screwing around, though. They are actually being pretty quick here. Bang. Yeagaru is not happy. He's saying, wow. I don't know why he said, wow. Um, the IS-4 over there, DMG having a ball here. Absolute ball. This is the reward for doing good things in an aggressive fashion. You play hard, and suddenly you are looking into the side of an entire red team. There's a 62A who didn't go the medium flank and is currently role-playing a heavy, which was not a good move. Uh, and DMG is looking to clear that because that is a very, very nasty enemy. If the 62A with that mobility and that uh, quick-firing DPM can get anywhere near him, then he can make some traits. And that's not what we're after here. Oh, look at that. The VK... We're now at nearly 3k damage. 3k damage, 4 minutes 57 gone. Now, it's obviously going to slow down. Second kill, the T95 E6. Seriously, GG. Um, <laughs> it's not a lot of love here. I tried. I tried. Matches perfectly with my losing streak. WTF is this game. <laughs> I love it, eh? I love it. We all, we've all been there. And that's exactly where I would have fired as well. I can't tell you how many times. I actually, in a training room once, Bushful of Bacon was up there and I cleared him as the last tank. I was just so certain. That's where people go. AP, nah, heat. We'll heat that. Unlucky. Very tempted to go for the uh, HE round there. That FV215B being a little bit too aggressive, showing off the entirety of the nose. That T62A, the HE round was coming in next. I think that would have cleared him. Would have been a uh, would have been another kill for the DMG, but not to worry. If it's, everything's actually looking pretty good here. Yeah, well, it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket very quickly. Don't worry. Um, it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket very, very quickly. <laughs> here we go. The E50M 
is looking solid. No shots there on the IS-4, but low damage. Well worth a poke, that. And everyone's suddenly dead. Um, well, that didn't take long. <laughs> that was looking great and not looking so great. And we still don't know where that grill is. Uh, the IS-4 is obviously hurting. The 215B is obviously hurting. So this is a great and very interesting final three minutes of the game to come up. The problem here is the grill. The grill is unspotted at the back of the map, which means that DMG can't really engage his 215B as cleanly as you'd like because the grill could pop one off over the top here very, very comfortably. The 215B has just been too aggressive. That's okay. So now there's one in cap, there's the grill at the back. And then there's the 215B right there. And the 215B is just going to sneak behind that rock. Oh, and there's the grill. That was a HE shell. That's exactly what we were expecting. As soon as DMG went to make that trade to get the kill, the grill was all over it. And it also means that he... This, this is impossible now. This is a really tough situation. Because unless DMG can get up here and get easy shots on the 215B, the 215B is having none of it. Just playing... As you should, in this case, when you're a one-shot, a very, very passive spotting role. DMG is working the buttocks off, trying to get a good, solid look at this 215B. And every time he... You know, I mean, this is such a tough gig. Every time you get spotted here, you, you hear that grill HE shell come hissing in. It's sitting there waiting for the Leopard 1 to be available. And yet the clock is ticking on the base. All the decisions to make now are hard ones. But here's the key, I think. That grill is going to be pinned up there as long as it's just thirsting for this HE shell into the Leo 1. And that means you can probably sneak across here and get... Oh, no. The IS-4 is looking straight down the gun barrel. And that is a big 655 hit. Now, I think that was from the grill as well. Not certain... Yeah, it had to be from the grill. Um, I am certain. Uh, this <laughs> this is really tough. Got to get around there. Got to get to the cap. And this is a really, really, really tight final minute. Three tanks to clear. 20 left on the cap. DMG has no choice but to pump the, uh, the petrol and get down there fast and hard. Doing it as wide as possible to try and stop the grill from getting a shot. And does so, does so very successfully, in fact, and gets around into the IS-4. One clear. Oh, bugger, the 215B has come down, which is perfect because you need to clear that tank. 40 seconds left. How many hit points has the grill got left? Four kills, 5K damage, but every last second of this game has been interesting. Now we're a one shot and it is all on the table. This has got to be some strong driving here. Lovely move. Getting up behind the grill as a priority rather than doing the damage. Very, very close. He's got behind him. Oh, come on. Max roll. Oh, my God. That was like half a second from getting the gun around there and getting stuck into DMG. 6,000 damage, five kills, but an absolute ball terror of a game. Well played, lots to think about there, and certainly a successful outcome. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you're having a happy time over the holidays. Look after yourselves, and until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.